What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys and this is going to be a Unity tips and tricks video. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that could make your work easier. Alright, so the first few tips and tricks are going to be related to positioning. First of all, you have move to view. Apart from using the translate tool to move an object around the scene, you can also use the move to view option. To demonstrate what this does, have an object selected in the scene and then turn the scene camera away from that object and then click game object, move to view. The keyboard shortcut is Control alt f As you can see, the object has been repositioned so that it is now centered within the view. You turn the camera somewhere else or you can even move the camera to another position and then hit Control alt f again you'll see that the object has been repositioned so that it is centered in the view next we have align to view the keyboard shortcut is Control shift f or you can also select it from the game object menu when it comes to positioning cameras it can be a little challenging to set the camera at the right angle or at the angle that you were actually hoping to set it at so in that case you can use align to view this will not only reposition the object but also change its rotation let's see how this works. Make sure you have the main camera selected in the scene and then go into an angle that you would like to have the main camera at and then hit Control shift f Now you'll see that the camera angle has been changed. Also its position has been changed and now the main camera is looking at the scene in the same way how we were earlier looking at the scene through the scene camera. So this is one of the cases where align to view can be very useful. Alright, on to the next step. Using the translate tool, you can move an object relative to any given axis. You can also move the object relative to the viewport. To do this, hold down shift and you'll notice a square appearing in the center of the translate tool. And then when you move the object around in the scene, you'll notice the X, Y and Z values changing. This is because the object is not moving relative to a particular axis, it's moving relative to the viewport. This can be useful in many cases as well. Alright, the next few tips are going to be related to navigation. First of all, you have align view to select it. This will change the alignment of the scene camera so that it is aligned with the selected object and looking in that object's forward direction. So we have the cube selected, click game object, align view to select it and as you can see we are now looking in the forward direction of the cube if i rotate this cube so that now it's forward is pointing in a different direction and then select align view to select it we are now looking in that direction all right next you have lock view to select it the keyboard shortcut is shift f this will lock the view to whatever object is currently selected so that if you move an object around the scene camera is going to move along with it this is great because if you have an object in the scene that is moving around during gameplay and you want the scene view to be able to follow that object then you can lock the view to that particular object and when that object moves the scene view is going to move along with it you're not permanently locked in if you just change your rotation then you break the lock all right next we have frame selected the keyboard shortcut is f this basically repositions the scene view camera so that whatever object is selected is now centered within the scene view let's test this out have any object in your scene selected and press f as you can see this object is now in the center of the scene view the object's position has not changed but rather our scene view camera's position has changed all right the next step is a really simple one you already know that you have this sort of first person view you can move front back left right up and down but if you are not satisfied with the speed at which it's moving you can hold down shift and speed it up all right the next few tips are going to be a couple of keyboard shortcuts first of all you have toggle active state to do that hit shift alt a next you have create empty game object the keyboard shortcut is Control shift n and if you would like to create a child within any selected game object hit shift alt n and to add a component to any selected object hit Control shift a also the transform gizmo toggles have keyboard shortcuts center and pivot is z and local and global is x all right next we're going to take a look at a few miscellaneous tips and tricks if you don't already know this you have the ability to maximize any given tab by clicking on this drop down here and clicking maximize the keyboard shortcut is shift space this can be very useful especially if you're working on a very small screen and you want to get a bigger view of the scene for example so you can make sure the scene tab is selected and then hit shift space you now have a nice big view of the scene to go back just hit shift space again you can do this for any of the other tabs as well all right next you have the ability to lock the inspector this can be very useful in cases where for example you have a particular object selected and you want to be able to see its components and or, or the values of its components at all times so you can select that object and click on this lock icon here and then when you select any other game object in the scene or in the hierarchy there's no change in this inspector that's okay because you can create a second inspector and then you can see the properties of other objects in that inspector all right this next 
tip may not be all that helpful, but I figured I'd mention it anyways. In the project panel, you can expand any of the folders in the hierarchical structure. If you want to have a look at all the folders within this assets folder, you don't necessarily have to expand each one individually. You can just collapse it and then hold down Alt and expand it again. And now all the subfolders and their subfolders are also shown. Next, you have the ability to save your searches. As your projects get bigger, there's a chance that this list of assets might get really long. So you might find yourself searching for assets over and over again. You don't have to type in a name again and again. You can just enter your search and then click save search. You'll be given an option to name the search, name it custom to, and then anytime in the future, you can use that search again. Next, you have the ability to undock the preview window. Now, when you have a material or a model, for example, selected in your project panel, in the inspector, along with all its properties, you'll also be shown a preview window at the bottom. You can undock this window by right clicking on it. This opens it up in a separate window, which you can resize or place anywhere else. And if you close that tab, it comes back here again. And finally, you have the ability to lock certain layers from being selected. Now, as your scenes get bigger and more cluttered, you might have difficulty selecting certain objects. So you might not want certain objects to be selected. Select the game object that you would like to lock the selection for. To lock the selection for this object, first of all, assign it to a layer. You can either add your own layer or use one of the layers that are provided by default. I'm going to assign this to the water layer. And then in the layers drop down next to the water layer, click on this lock icon. Now, when you unselect this object, you cannot select it anymore. You can select any other object in the scene, but you cannot select that particular object. If you go back to the layers drop down and unlock it, you can now select that object again. So yeah, that's it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you would like to watch more tutorials, you can click in the top left corner of the screen. And in the top right is a link to my music channel where I post music that I make in my free time. In the bottom left corner, you have a preview for a small game that I made. The links for the project and the game build are in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.